you sure have you ever tested that what you feel you know with someone you may have a different view than your own then let's talk to one another let's reason with one another on a scriptural discussion with the son of man a live broadcast every sunday at 12 noon on tv 33 fm 88.1 whbr and comcast cable so why don't you call and let's discuss the holy bible and if you have one the holy quran and come to an agreement about the holy scriptures and their true meaning so tune in to a scriptural discussion with the Son of Man every Sunday at 12 noon right here on TV 33, FM 88.1 WHBR, and Comcast Cable. You can call in live on the air at area code 313-868-4348-868-0342 and 868-0351. Of course, the area code is 313. That's 313-868-4336-868-0342 and 868-0342. And now let's go live with a scriptural discussion with the Son of Man. Brother, I don't know what you all did, but you need to turn the volume back up on your, on your, uh, at the station. In the name of Allah, <clears throat> the beneficent, the most merciful the truthful, and the most just. I greet all of you once again who are in within the sound of my voice with the greeting words of peace from the Lord of the worlds. Allah's salam alaikum. You know, um, <clears throat> Uh, there are people who think that they have a basis for argument. Against uh, me and what I teach. As I um, am telling you that I'm teaching you the truth. If I was not willing to let other people come here in the class and challenge me on what I teach, then that would be a red flag in the in the mind of the intelligent person uh, that uh, there must be a problem with what I teach and I must realize that there is a problem otherwise what do a man who knows the truth have to fear if he knows that what he's saying is right, what does he have to fear to let people come in and uh, put forth arguments that they think are against what he knows to be true? The truth, once the truth makes its appearance, it's like the light. Once the light makes its appearance, darkness must vanish. The truth has come, and falsehood must vanish. As uh, many people think that they know something, simply because they have been told it and believed it and they've heard it repeated so often that they mistake uh, their memory of a thing for having knowledge of the thing. <laughs> memory isn't is not understanding. 
just because a baby memorizes the alphabet and memorizes spelling words. That does not mean that they understand what the alphabet is used for or what the words that they memorize the spelling of mean. Do you understand? I have um, viewed some of the disgruntled people like uh, Eric Muhammad and some of them that uh, follows that that uh, train of thought and uh, they seem to think that uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't uh, have me under his wing or tutelage uh, long enough for me to be proclaiming myself to be the son of man. Two years ain't long enough. Well, if I wasn't the son of man and he was trying to make me that, and two years, two years and, and however many years he would have had with me wouldn't have been long enough. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't make me the son of man. I was born that. Just as the the son out there, the son ain't making uh, those that corn that you eat. The saint, the son, is helping that kernel of corn become what it had in it to become. An oak tree was an oak tree when it was just that little small seed. You don't become the son of man. Allah said, I'm going to create a mortal. And to answer your question about which one came first, the chicken or the egg, the chicken did. As with the, you have proofs of that all of the time, and you ain't, you run around here letting the devil play games with you. Which came first, Moses or the Torah? <laughs> Show me that it existed before Moses got here. Show me that the gospel existed before Jesus got here. Allah creates the first creation, then he reproduces it. Am I clear? All right, then. So now we don't have to hear that foolishness no more, right? Okay. Now, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he always spoke right and exact. It's just that the people who was listening while he was speaking right and exact, they were hearing generally. As the messenger said, Islam is the black man's nature. What you heard was, when he said that, Islam is black people's nature. That's not what he said. He said, Islam is the black man's nature. And uh, if I ask you what he meant by that, 
All you can do is guess. You know, it's like people who uh, thought or think that time is linear. When time is not linear, it's spherical. It's spiraling, always. It don't travel in a straight line, it's spiraling. Past, present, future. Past, present, future. Past, present, future. It's, 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 it, that's the way it is. I'd like to get some of you who, who are truly scientists and we will sit down and talk and I will show you that I understand what, what that is. Solomon said it in a different way. He said, that which has been will be, that which, has, that which will be has been. There's nothing new under the sun. So, since there is nothing new under the sun, how are you going to get something new? There is no new matter. There is no new truth. But, but, the scriptures say, he that sitteth on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. Yeah. <laughs> you notice the, the messenger said this concerning the planets. He said, you will notice the universe itself is egg-shaped. Say, and the planets in the universe is egg-shaped. And he said, uh, they're not a perfect round sphere. He said, well, this leaves a little work for some wise man. <laughs> he said, this is the way we look at wisdom. That which I cannot perfect someone else will have to come and perfect that thing. See, that's where I come in at. So I come to make that which was egg-shaped a perfect circle. <laughs> I come to complete what they couldn't complete. They couldn't give you the understanding of all of the revelation. I come to give you the understanding of it all. I come to complete that, you see. So, um, but to get back to this, the little youngster who called me an old fool. <laughs> Real strange being called old. <laughs> I, I don't feel old. But anyway, uh, an old fool is what he called me. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, the let's see here. I want to uh, show you that the only reason you talk like you do. Um, it's because you don't know what's written. And uh, because you don't know what's written, you don't understand how foolish that was of a statement you made talking about I wasn't up under the Honorable Elijah Muhammad long enough. You see, I just barely had time to say, I... And then when the the second year Salam, and then the third year he was gone. I link him. <laughs> it tickled me. It tickled me. Poor little thing. And uh, I ain't mad at him. You know. Um, but you know, uh, you know, I learned a long time ago that. Uh, most dogs that'll bark, I mean that'll bite, they don't do a lot of barking. 
if you grew up around people who had dogs, then you know that. Most people that had a dog that would bite, and then they done taught how to get you. They don't let him do a lot of barking. You know? The dog barked because he wants to frighten those who he barking at because he's afraid. And he barks so that he can get his prey to run. In other words, turn his back. And then the dog can bite him from behind. You, you understand? Just like they tell you about uh, lions, tigers, and bears. Worst thing you can do is run. <laughs> but, uh, because now you've emboldened him. He ain't looking for a fight, he's looking for a meal. Do, do you understand? All right, when you... When you get hungry, are you looking for a fight? <laughs> Somebody start a fight with you and takes your appetite away. You don't want no I'm hungry. I didn't come in here looking for no fight. Came looking for something to eat. Uh, so he wants something that's gonna run. <laughs> he catch him and, and overwhelm him and eat him. Do you understand? Okay. Now turn to Matthew. Uh, the 20th chapter. <clears throat> if you had spent more time studying the Bible, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he gave you a message to, he shared with you in the book, Message to the Black Man, in the back of it, he put a little guide in there. It's called Guide to Understanding the Holy Bible. Guide to Understanding the Quran. And he would tell you of different passages, knowing that if you went in there, and started going through there, you would see a lot of things that he was telling you about, but you would also see, you would, just curiosity would make you look at something else and have that you would, it would generate and create a thirst for understanding in you. Then instead of me coming here and you cussing me out, you'd have been happy to see me. But no, you, you busy running around here trying to build mosques to oppose me. As the Holy Quran says, those who built the mosque to oppose Islam. So everything is here for a reason. And it's true on more than one level. And... Um, I don't have to run away from people who disagree with me. I don't have to threaten to beat them up. <laughs> That's what I used to do when I was a youngster. You know, when I was in uh, elementary and junior high, I was kind of growing out of that in high school. I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't so raggedy when I got to high school, so I wasn't too interested in fighting. Nobody want to fight when they think they shop. <laughs> so he got on his got on his got on his uh, clothes that he's he's profiling in. He don't want to fight. <laughs> he go home and change, and then put on them Levi's that uh, stand up by himself. And uh, some of these older brothers know what I'm talking about. If your Levi's didn't stand up by itself, you didn't have nothing going on. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, uh, but then, you know, I mean, but nobody want to throw hands with you when they shop, man. 
<laughs> you know, that's one of the things that the, that the messenger knew about uh, too. He told all the brothers to put on suits and ties. You know, now the brothers would fight now. But they wasn't so quick to fight when they were sharp, bro. <laughs> so so yeah, we put on suits and ties every day. Consequently, you very seldom saw Muslims in fights with people. We learn to talk. We learn to 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 be more use more diplomacy. Anybody can haul off and hit somebody in the mouth. But just because you beat a person up, that don't mean that that made you right or them wrong just because you beat them up. You know, a man forced against his will, he may say, yeah, okay, I give. That don't mean his opinion in his heart, in his mind, has changed. He just know next time he gonna have to do something, uh, get, get with you when he see you coming again, he may have something else for you. You know, you're going to get enough of walking up to people, bullying people and messing over people. You better leave people alone. You know, and so just check yourself. When someone uh, jump on you or fight you and you figure they was justified, when the fight ends, generally a, a just-minded person, well, it ends. But if you attack them for no reason, just because you think it's over, you might have won that round. But there are plenty of people, lots of people, that it ain't over until they, they plan on paying you back. Do you understand? You know, so a lot don't love aggressors, and I don't either. I ain't never liked a bully, even when I was a youngster. I ain't like no bully. You know, so, and you don't either. So don't go around bullying people. So, now I want to show you that you didn't know what you was talking about. And I hope he's listening so he can unmute his phone. Because this is the 20th chapter of Matthew, and I'm going to go to the cut to the chase, the 28th verse. It says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, and to give his life a ransom for many. Give his life for what? What did uh, Jacob do when he was wrestling with the angel and the angel told him to let me go? He said, I'm not going to let you go. Until you what? You're going to have to bless me. Got to have a ransom here. When somebody holding you uh, uh, until you do something for them, that's called a ransom. If I was the white man, I wouldn't let the son of man go either. <laughs> until he got that uh, blessed me. <laughs> and they smart. They held us here, brother. <laughs> and now that I'm here, I can teach him that which will change him from being uh, the devil into a new creature. It says, if any man be in Christ, if, a, if any man be brought into the knowledge and understanding of the messengers of God, the prophets and their scriptures, if any man be in that knowledge, In that body, he's a new creature. You don't call him devil no more. You call him Muslim. <laughs> you 
Do you understand? So, you can either listen to me, uh, you can be, uh, as I told you so many times before, you can either be profit by my presence or be destroyed by it. But one or, one or the other is what's going to happen to you. Because yeah, things finna change whether you want them to or not. You must ain't been looking at the news. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad didn't need me no uh, two years to teach me. Listen to this. I guess it's a play. Just a moment. See if I can get it to play. <clears throat> Give me a minute, and I think that I can get this to play here for you and let you hear it straight from his mouth. He sure wasn't talking about none of y'all. I know keep me from having to keep on plugging these things. Ah, uh, let's see here. I'm going to say to you that I have enjoyed a very lovely afternoon. Y'all was sitting about there making all that noise. He was talking to me. Because he knew that all he had to do was wake me up. Because once he woke me up, he knew that uh, the nature of the mind that Allah had created in me. I already had uh, the guidance. It's in my nature. It's in the nature of the way my mind is was formed like a fish you don't have to teach the fish how to swim throw him in the water and he'll take off if I throw you in the Bible you get confused if I throw you in the Holy Quran you get confused how's that how you know that's the truth look at all these religions you got he threw me in there and I took off swimming I'm not confused. I understand it because Allah addressed it to me and told me. You notice, 
You don't hear nobody say they confused when they get through listening to me. There ain't no confusion in what I teach. I take away your confusion of the scripture. The scriptures was for me and I am for you. So I'm that little book that Allah had prepared and uh, but he couldn't give me to the messenger until the right time. And so the messenger knew that uh, I was uh, going to be coming and so he he stopped getting on the rostrum for a while, you know, and uh, he even said it. He said, I, I don't, I'm forbidden to come out until the proper hour. Didn't nobody even have sense enough to ask him, the apostle, what you mean you're forbidden? You're the apostle when you come out. They didn't, they didn't ask, but you notice, he told me, I'll have you so, I'll have you walking around talking back to me. Matter of fact, he told me I, he, if I gave him, if he gave me about a, uh, if I gave him about a month, he said, um, I will have you so smart that you can tie him around your little finger. Yeah, that's what he said. You heard anybody else able to do that? It is not that the white people. Of Christianity, the theologians, that uh, they have this really did. They never heard it before. What do you say? You think the white man hid the truth from you? The white man didn't hide the truth from nobody. He ain't never heard it. Allah hid it. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. Till what? The kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man who went out in search of treasure. Huh? Hidden in a field. And when he find it, he hide it and go and sell all that he have and come back and bought the field. Huh? All right then. Did Jesus speak plain or did he speak in parables? Well, then he, Jesus hid the truth. Moses hid the truth. They wasn't told to bear witness to you. They were told to bear witness to me. And then I was told to come and warn you. And that's what I'm doing. You can accept it or reject it, but you sure ain't got no argument for me. If you do, come in here. Uh, do you like Ali? Get yourself in there. You, you climb through them ropes there. <laughs> no, I'm not going to beat you. Beat you up with my fist. I'm going to beat you up there in your head. I'll uh, give you a good beating and you'll come right and say, uh, I believe. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what the messenger told you I would do. Come in here and prove that I'm not the one by showing the people that I can't do what I just, what you would say made a boast of. You know, like I told people, you know, like the other man that came in here and Every lie he told, you notice, I start, I, I, I address it. And it sounded like I was over-talking him until you go back and listen. Then you'll see, he was trying to slip some lies in here, and I didn't let him slip now. Though. Huh? You know, when people, let me tell you how to tell when somebody lying to you. When you try to stop them and ask them a question about something they just said and they pretend they didn't hear you say, wait a minute, I want to ask you something. <laughs> how you know that? How do you know that what I just said is true? And how do I know that you know? Because I went through the same school system 
from first through 12th grade that you did. And I remember every time the teacher said something and was talking and my hand went up, the teacher didn't, didn't keep on talking. The teacher immediately stopped and said, yes, what is it? He said, you just said so-and-so and such and so-and-so, and, -so, and I didn't understand that. And the teacher would take their time. They wouldn't get mad at you. They take their time and go back and talk with you about it. The only time they got angry with you is when they gave you the clear answer and that kind of thing, and then you, uh, it became evident to them that you really wasn't, didn't have a question that you was just trying to hold up class, and then they gave you SWAT or sent you to the uh, uh, VP or somewhere. Uh, uh, you know, it became evident to them that you was clowning. And that's when they got angry with you. But if you asked a question for the sake of learning, did no teacher get mad at you? They just answered your question and then asked you, "Do you, is that do you understand that?" And so, likewise, you heard these people come in here. I gave the man an understanding that the book wasn't talking about cutting somebody's physical hand off. It was saying you don't lend a hand to someone, you cut their help off. You cut cut off them being able to steal something and go and get some money for it. Because if don't nobody buy their stolen property, they didn't buy it because they wanted it. They bought it because they wanted to go and get, make some money off of it, didn't they? But what if you don't buy their stolen property? He might go and throw it back over the fence where he jumped the fence and stole it from. Huh? Or even leave it somewhere and somebody might find your stuff and bring it back to you. But you know, uh, you know, just like people in the dark, they can't see number black and white. You know, if you think that's the, uh, look up the word cut. Cut don't always mean with a knife. They be filming a movie and they say cut. People will be doing something. They say cut that out. Language is colorful. But you know when you a murderer, like the devil was from the beginning, they say he was a murderer from when? And abode not in the truth. Because there's no truth in it. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. That don't just mean he called it a little white lie. It means he speaketh of his own mind. For his mind lies to him. He's, de he's self-deluded. And then he speaks what he's been deluded with. He speaketh of his own. For he's a liar and the father of it. He's called the prince of darkness. Huh? That's one of his that's one of his names. He got a lot of names. Bill's above. What's up, Bub? <laughs> uh, now you see why they don't want to. As the messenger told me, he said, uh, you give me a month, son of man. He didn't say son of man, but he was talking to me. He said, I have you so smart, uh, so smart that you'll be able to time around your little finger. That's right. You know, a rattlesnake look big. Some of them, they get big, no. Some of them get what? 15, 18, 20 feet long? But if there was giants in the earth, he wouldn't be no more than a worm. <laughs> and in those day and time, there was giants in the earth. <laughs> As it was in the days of Noah. <laughs> so... So, I mean, it's all kind of things, you know, that uh, you know, that you think about giants. And I'm talking about minds that are so great that things that frighten you ain't nothing but a worm to him. <laughs> so you wrap a worm around your little finger. And so Allah told me, he said, fear not the worm, Jacob. 
Yeah, that's right. They played with the words. You know. But uh, <laughs> I don't drink poison. No. The sun draws up all that water that you can't drink. But the sun draws it up and don't draw up no poison. It draws up nothing but water, baby. <laughs> so, um, so you heard uh, the scriptures say that the Son of Man didn't come to be ministered to. I didn't come here to be taught by nobody. The messenger didn't teach me. He raised me. Once he raised me into the knowledge of myself, he raised me into the scriptures. He said, I'm here to put your mind back into the scriptures. Knowing that from a child I had been taught the Holy Scriptures, but I left them. He put me back in them. And then he said, so you can find the truth of what I'm teaching. Because why? Because in order for me to fulfill my destiny, my destiny was, as Allah said, a messenger comes to you verifying, finding the truth of your teachings. Verifying uh, that which is with you. That's what I do. I verify what was with them. Now, let, let him verify what I just told you, and then we're going back to John F. Kennedy. It is the first time they ever heard the real truth of themselves. They never heard it before. That uh, they have this real idea of Christianity, the theologians, that uh, they have this real idea. They never heard it before. It is the first time they ever heard the real truth of themselves. <laughs> As one priest told me one day, he said, Elijah, he said, we knew this was coming all right enough. He said, but I never understood it from the Bible like you have. I say, your Bible teaches you that. I say, it teaches you that the secret of it was never known and would not be known until the end. And then God was sending you that preacher to preach to you the truth. Oh, but as uh, the Holy One warned you that uh, Abraham and Ishmael, they prayed for such men. <laughs> that God would rise him up from among you <laughs> at that time to teach you the knowledge of the book and to make known to you the wisdom which is hidden from you. Do you the little prayer that God uh, put it all in his ear? <laughs> Why you must have it today, it is due to the removal of your own rule, your own God that you've been worshiping, that you didn't know where he lived at and where he exists. But some of us say he lived in my soul. Yes, that's the truth that the truth do live within us. But knowing where the truth came from is the main thing. Who is the truth giver? <laughs> if you have patience with me for about a month, I will have you so smart. <laughs> yes, I 
I will have you so smart that you can tie them around your fingers. If you have patience with me, for God I'm If you have patience with me, for God I'm Even, even the way he said that. Since the Son of Man is written, I didn't come here to be ministered to. So he said to me, well, if you have patience with me, for about a month, I'll have you so smart that you'll be able to time around your little finger. He was very careful to show me respect. That's what you say. Uh, you know, all of them were told to respect their Lord. They taught me who I am. And Allah took that oath from them. Just because he a little child, don't you, if you don't think you can humble yourself and submit to him, then you better tell me now. He said, when I, uh, a messenger comes to you, verifying that which I, uh, which is with you, you shall believe in him and you shall aid him. Now, do you accept my compact in that? They said, we, he said, we do affirm. He said, then you bear him witness. And I, too, am of the bearers of witness with you. Huh? So all of them bore me witness. You notice the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he bore me witness. Yeah. Yeah. He he wasn't he wasn't playing. He even told the people that uh you know that he was uh let me show you here. <clears throat> you know I I keeps a lot of this around because people be sitting up out there hunching people say he lying, he lying. Then when I play the tape, they they look stupid. But you think I would dare come in here and don't have the evidence right, knowing you? Don't no lawyer come in court, and if he any kind of lawyer, if he make a statement and say case law says this or case law says that while he's saying it, you know what he's doing? He's asking permission to approach the bench and opposite counsel. And he passes them what he's telling them. So he don't have to hear no E-I-E-I-O. Uh, is, is that right, brother? <laughs> yeah. What you have been told, it was told for you to understand. It was not given to you to understand before that. This is the time that you must know the secret of all truth that has been put in a symbolic manner. Now the day the truth must be lifted and you understand. You know why he you know why he said the truth that has been put in symbolic manner? It's because he knew that uh, after he did his job, that I would be here and Allah was had promised that he would give me of that hidden truth, that hidden manner. That's over there in Revelation. One of you smart brothers, tell me what chapter. One, two, or three. 
I gave you a hint. Chapter 2, verse 17. It says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what Allah. Uh, you know, Jesus said, God is what? God is a spirit, huh? The term Allah in Arabic means the God. Then he that hath an ear, let him hear what the God, the Spirit, Allah, <laughs> saith unto the churches. He refers to the seven churches as, the, the seven continents as seven churches. These are continents here. Let the whole world hear this. It says, to him that overcometh, that overcometh what? In order to come out from under 400 years of affliction, you can't come out just with a, a, you ever played chess? You know what a stalemate is? Nobody won. Right? That's just another word for draw, huh? Okay, if you didn't win, you didn't overcome. You notice, the winner is standing up here talking. I've told everybody that their religions are false and told them I'd give them $20,000 if they can come in here and show me that they have a religion that's true and it ain't mine. Have you heard anybody do that yet? To him that overcometh, it says, uh, will I give to eat of the hidden, what, manna? What did the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say? Let's go back and hear it again. be lifted. Look outside. What do you see? Darkness has drawn a veil over the creation. What happened when the sun rises? The veil is lifted, huh? Now you know what he is talking about. The truth, the son of righteousness. You notice all religions purport and at least suggest to you that they are teaching you righteousness. All people who are religious suggest, at least suggest it, that they are teaching you righteousness, right? But the world in a terrible shape. And now that I'm here with the true religion, Where's all them people that claim they was teaching you righteousness? Why don't they come in here and defend what they've been teaching you? They say God sent them, right? And I said God ain't sent none of them. And they really mad at me. Like the, the chief priests and the, and the Pharisees and the people was mad at Jesus. Want to know what they're going to do about it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. In this day and time, the worst thing you could do is call yourself, asking yourself and your little cohorts what you're going to do about me. 
If you ain't going to submit, you're going to be soon off of this planet. It's the same as having a tiger by the tail, one of them Bengal tigers, and you got his tail and trying to keep him from uh, catching you. And that's is about what you're going to do. You're going to be dinner. That's what you're going to do. You're going to get tired before he do. <laughs> is, that, is that right? You can't hold him and you can't let him go. Huh? Yeah. So, you know, there ain't nothing you can do. The truth has come. And falsehood, the truth didn't just come. Did the Torah just come? Did the gospel just come? Did the Holy Quran just come? Or did Moses bring it? Did Jesus bring it? Did Muhammad bring it? Well, I'm the son of man. I'm the spirit of truth. And I have brought the truth. The truth has come. And falsehood must vanish. You'd be happy if you had not been trying to make money off of the truth. Now that uh, the Lord of the truth has come, as the messenger said, my people oppose the God of their own salvation. He saw you. The prophets all saw you. They say he came unto his own. And they rejected him. First must he suffer many things and be rejected of this evil generation. You will listen to everybody but me. You wish you had a. You would wish it was just the opposite way around. By the time it's over with, only time you agree with me is when you go. When I'm telling you to do something that you wanted to do. When I tell you that, that don't do that. Oh, uh, well, I can do. I can. Yeah, you go right ahead. Through begging you. Let you get what you need to get. Coming up to me talking about you believe I'm the son of man. Lying. Then how come you don't do what I say? Let me get on back to this. Now, you need to hear him say these things. <laughs> said it's not that I want you to believe and worship me. He said but believe and worship him whom I preach to you. He didn't say who I preach to you about either. What was he preaching? Freedom, justice, and equality. The truth. He was preaching the truth. And he wanted you to believe and worship the truth. And the truth have now been made flesh. And is dwelling among you. It's me. I am in the Father. 
and the Father is in me. I'm in the truth, and the truth is in me. The only reason you don't accept me is because you love wickedness. You think I don't know? They told me why you didn't accept me. Light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds was evil. And everyone that doeth evil hates the light. Neither cometh to the light lest his deeds should be reproved. They told me what, what I was looking at. I don't have to wonder why you hate me. They told me. He had stopped coming out because Allah had revealed to him after 40 years that, hey, the one that I sent you to raise ain't made it here yet. <laughs> and he told them, he said, I'm expecting him here pretty soon. And I don't want him to come in and find me taking over his job. That's right. I didn't get there till 73. And then the man, little Eric Muhammad, called me a fool, you know. He said, that fool didn't come in until, uh, that nigga didn't come in until 73. He didn't have time to be taught nothing. The messenger said, uh, you must excuse my uh, language. When I got to the schoolhouse, the teacher was closing, dismissing class. <laughs> but I know one thing. Ain't nobody have to tell me to watch my filthy mouth. Ain't nobody had to put me out there, put me out there room because I couldn't keep a civil tongue in my head. And if the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was listening and listening to the conversation between us, which one of us do you think he would have sided with? You running around here thinking that you're doing something big by calling white people cracker and and calling the Jews hook-nosed Jews and all that old foolishness. All you're doing is making a fool out of yourself. That ain't got nothing to do with righteousness, making mockery of people. That's just you 
following your rebellious thoughts, your rebellious devils. Looking up to a man like Carly. You know, when the messenger was here, if Collett had got up saying some of those things that he was saying, he wouldn't have got up but one time. And the messenger would have said, where did you find this foolish man? You take that foolish brother off the roster. He can't represent me. Did you ever hear Malcolm curse when he was representing the messenger? Did you ever hear Minister Farrakhan curse when he was representing the Honorable Elijah? Did you ever hear any of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's ministers curse? You know, if you can't recognize people trying to do better, then you are not qualified to stand up and fuss at them for not doing better. Huh? I'm going to tell you something. If I was white folks and you were telling me that no matter what I did, I were, you was going to kill me, I'd be trying to get you too. Matter of fact, I'd be mad, mad as they say, mad as hell at you. You made me the way I am. You boast about you made me the way I am. And then you punish me for being the way that I am. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad wasn't that kind of man. He said, give justice to where it belongs. He said, if you say he's not righteous, then he will say, I was not my maker. And that'll stop your mouth. And he said, that is for sure. The white, ra white race did not make themselves. It was our kind that made them. So he could easily tell you that you made me yourself. If you didn't want me to be this way, what you make me this way for? Punish me for what? That's what I'd be asking you. Punish me for what? Now don't try to use this on me, white folks. I'm giving you the answer to all these people who out here uh, misrepresenting the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Just remember, I'll give you a little hint. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak. Now, you were told to stop your evil in the time when I got here. Well, I'm here now. Any deed that you do, even getting up out of bed in the morning, you don't have to get up if you choose not to. You can choose to get up or you can choose to lay there. You can choose to leave the house or you can choose not to. Is that right? Well, you can choose to keep doing evil or you can choose to stop. And I'm telling you now, stop. Man. I don't, I'm not telling you to do something that's out of your power to do. Well, I, I don't know what, whatever you don't want somebody to do to you, then don't you do to somebody else. Can't claim ignorance. You want to know when somebody know they're doing you wrong? You just go over there and do it to them. And when they holler, oh, so you know better. Okay, right on.
You think you can fool Allah? You can fool your lie detector. You can't fool God's. This, your hands, your feet, your whole body is one big lie detector. Aight? <laughs> All right, let's uh, get on back in. I'm going to take you into JFK again. Do anybody got any questions on anything I said thus far? Yes. You, it ain't never wrong to show kindness to nobody. It's wrong to show evil to people. And it's wrong to be sitting up. A, a lot of us, we say we showing love to white folks, and it ain't love. It's you scared of white people. I know how people act when they scared of somebody. When I was in school and I thought a brother could whoop that wrong, I was very kind to it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the truth. See, you lie. I'm not a liar. I'm not kind to white people because I'm scared of them. I'm kind to them because that's what I expect from them. I don't. I don't go around disrespecting them, and I'm not going to accept them disrespecting me. The minute I find out that you ain't got sense enough to show me respect, you ain't got to worry about me getting up in your face no more, coming in your store no more, or anything else that you, I know what to do for you. Just what the book says, shake the dust off of your feet. Now don't you think that because I'm kind to you that I done forgot all of the wrong that was done to me. But don't never apologize for being yourself. The, 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 the righteous are righteous regardless to how the wicked act. You can cuss me from now till the world look level. I'm not finna start getting in no cussing uh, contest with you. You may be cussed out or cussing at me, but soon you'll be standing there by yourself because the minute you start that, I'm gone. I ain't got to stand there and listen to it. Now, if you try to stop me from walking away, we got a problem, Houston. I ain't never seen no creature that God made that you corner and won't try to let won't let him leave that won't fight you. So if you let me leave, I'm gone. You ain't got to say, you ain't got to worry about me. If I'm on your property and you act like you don't want me there, I'm gone. I ain't gonna stand there arguing with you and fussing with you on your property. Because if the police come, you know who's going to jail? You're the one making mischief on another man's property arguing with him. Leave. I don't want nobody to think I'm scared. Well, go to jail. <laughs> you know, I care what a lot think of me. He told me how to conduct myself. He didn't say stand around and argue with people when they don't don't want to accept you. He said leave. Shake the dust off of your feet from even the whatever dust was in their house got on you. Shake that off. Is that what he said? Well, that's what I do, man. That's why I don't care where you go. If I've been there before you got there, when I leave, and, and when you when you come there and somebody asks you what did, did he mess over did he do do anything he had no business over there I said no he was very respectful 
Ah, ah. So, so, you know, this ain't about this. This ain't about uh, skin. We made the white man the devil. We made him that. Not you. You didn't have nothing to do with it. But those who are of the circle of knowledge that Jacob was of, we made them. Rulers make rulers. You see? And we told him how long he had to rule, and he knows that. When he was talking to Jesus, he said, all this was delivered to me. And I give it to whomever I please. And if you fall down and worship me, all this shall be yours. And Jesus told him, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Well, I am the Lord, your God, not Allah's God, yours. If you're smart, you will accept me. Don't you worry. You're going to have proof in a minute since this wouldn't get it. But anyway, uh, you notice you don't hear none of them coming in here swearing and going on at me. If he, if he that big a fool, he sure is a dumb devil. You won't hear none of them wise ones do it. Only people do that is you, my dead people who, you know, I ain't seen nothing dead yet that didn't stink. Huh? And so naturally, I know you got stinky attitude, so I, I put up with your stink till I can make sure that you know. Then I can judge you because you don't have no excuse after I make it plain to you and listen to your arguments and shoot them down, then you know that you lost the argument. You know that I told you the truth. Then why are you still disrespected me? Then you can be judged. So, Now, now let's uh, go back here and refresh you on uh, what happened with President Kennedy. And, uh, you know, I, I was always, um, you know, I had put it on, put it out of my mind for a while, but it came back recently, you know, on what really happened. You know, and I, I'm not going to say that everything that I'm about to show you is unrefutable. But so far, I haven't heard anybody refute it. And you can go and study it for yourself online pretty soon. Uh, because, you know, there's some Caucasian people that uh, want justice, man. And, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why some of them started helping the messenger in Chicago, and he thanked them for it. You know, he didn't single them out. Every now and then he mentioned one, like Mr. Tavet. You know, but for the most part, he just say the Chicago white people. Because he knows sometimes white folks get get on white folks for helping you. You understand? <laughs> yeah. But let me tell you something. In this day and time, you don't have to fear what a wicked person going to do to you if you do the right thing. They ain't going to do nothing to you. They get mad all they want. Soon they ain't going to have no mind. So don't worry about it. You've got to be out of your mind to be in, in the presence of God threatening his servants. 
after he done disarmed us. Shoot. <laughs> oh, he he took arms. I, I told y'all, get rid of them guns. You don't need no gun. The people that's got them going to be shooting each other. Thinking you getting your gun for me, you getting that gun to kill yourself. And I don't know why you ain't bearing me witness. You you seen it. I told you that's what was going to happen. Look, you don't control nothing on the earth. Allah controls what's on the earth. He said if we did not repel some people by means of others. Let me show you something. You remember I told you that uh, in Islam, there's more Islam practiced in America than any place on this planet? You remember I told you that? I, I want you to turn with me to the Holy Quran, and uh, you'll see my point. Turn to the 22nd chapter. And I want to say to, to the uh, Caucasian people, stop being ashamed to call yourself a Muslim, for that's what you really are. Because you've been practicing Islam, so you, ain't no sense in being ashamed to call yourself one who submits to God. Here it is right here. It says, in the 40th verse, it says, those who are driven from their homes without a just cause, except that they say, our Lord is Allah. And if Allah did not repel some people by others, Cloisters and churches and synagogues and mosques in which Allah's name is much remembered would have been pulled down. What other country you know of that people from any religious belief can build a house where God's word is remembered and be protected by the government? even though people in the government don't particularly care for that religious belief. They will send their troops there to make sure that nobody bother you if that's what you're worshiping. Go set up a church in Arabia and start trying to convert people to Christianity. Go, go set up a, a, a synagogue in Palestine and try to convert the Muslims that say they're Muslims there to Judaism. Go to Israel and try to set up a, a mosque and, and, and do the same. But go to America. If you buy your property, and you build you a, a synagogue, or you build you a a mosque, or you build you a church, or you build whatever place of worship, bet not nobody come over there and mess with you. Don't the government will come over there to defend you. That's Islam. They have an old saying, a rose by any other name would still smell the same sweet, wouldn't it? The Holy Quran also says, I'd like to show you these things.
I want you to turn to uh, chapter just a moment go to the fifth chapter of the Holy Quran and I want you to go over there to the 82nd verse it says thou wilt certainly find the most violent of people in enmity in opposition against the believers to be the Jews and the idolaters notice it didn't say those who say we are Jews it said the Jews and the idolaters and thou wilt find the nearest in friendship to the believers to be those who say we are Christians you notice didn't say those who are Christians it says those who say we are Christians huh now you think believers mean the people out here that believe in Allah the believers are the prophets the messengers of God how can you be a believer if you didn't understand you didn't understand what the Bible and the Holy Quran was talking about. You guessing at it. So you don't know whether you believe in it or not. But Allah called his prophets believers. He said, you shall believe in him and you shall aid him. Moses was a believer. David and Solomon and Jesus and Muhammad, they were believers. And those who are nearest in friendship Jesus said, if you do whatsoever I command you, then are you my friends. You got people right now in the Republican Party that's trying to force their religious views on somebody and the government of America is refusing to let them do it. Because the scriptures teaches you, the Holy Quran says, there is no compulsion in religion. Wilt thou force men till they are believers? So the Constitution of the United States says you cannot force your religion on people. Is that right? What other country you find that in? Most other people trying to make the, the, the word of God, trying to make the, 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 um, <laughs> the law that governed the people religion. You can't use religion to govern people. People have to decide on that themselves. That's our law's command. So separation of church and state is by Allah's command let whosoever will choose to serve God and whoever choose not to that's between them and who that's between them and God huh? I mean even if you see somebody robbing a bank what do the police tell you to do you call us and stay out the way. It ain't your job to go over there and stop no bank robber. If he choose to rob a bank, that's between him and this government. If a man choose to marry another man, that's between him and God, not him and you. Now what you can do is like the 
the, the, the basketball people did uh, Don Sterling. Said, now look, we got our association here. These are the guidelines. If you want to be in this association, this is what you got to do. If you want to get in heaven, God said, this is what you got to do. Huh? Now, if you choose to come in here, then don't tell us we ain't got no authority over you. Right? Because the minute you didn't like our authority, you if you didn't like our authority, you shouldn't have joined. Is that right? You could have stayed on out there where you was and we wouldn't try to tell you to do nothing. See, so there's no catch-22 there. But every man must choose to serve, obey, love God for himself. You can't force somebody to love what you love. They have to choose to do that. Huh? So the, you know, those who say we are Christian, they they nearer to the prophets in their faith and in their practices than the people who with their mouth claim to be Muslim. Talking about jihad, jihadists. Talking about you fighting jihad, running around shedding blood. Jihad is not, holy war have nothing to do with bloodshed. Holy war is the war that go on in your mind within you to conquer your own evil. That's not a war you fight with somebody else. That's a war you fight with yourself. So I want y'all to stop calling these people jihadists. They ain't nothing but murderers, devils. Call them that. And stop calling them Muslims. Probably wanna, they probably want to murder me for saying that. The Holy Quran says we take truth and hurl it against falsehood. It didn't say we take bullets and blow your brains out. The fuel of hell is men and bullets. What is a bullet? A little stone? The Holy Quran says the fuel of hell is men and stones. running around thinking they can uh, somehow make Islam, their Islam, triumph over other religions by killing everybody that don't believe in their religion. And you know the sad part? Is they, will, they out of their mouth, they pretty much will quote the truth. M mankind is but a single nation. Well, if mankind is a single nation, man, man of every kind is actually family to one another. Then why are you murdering your own family, man? You, you heard the conversation between me and Clive and Bundy? Did you notice how humble the man was? I mean, if people would stop trying to purposely put people against one another, we could come to the table and reason with each other and find out what's, what the problem is that, we, that exists between us, and we could iron it out. Of course, the biggest business on the planet is war. The gun industry was shut down if everybody followed my advice, so naturally they don't want nobody to follow my advice. But following their advice is just setting you and your children up to be used as tools and slaves 
to keep unjust, physically wealthy people wealthy. Well, you ain't going to have to worry about it in a minute. All you wealthy people, I want you to know something. You listen to me good. If you don't change the way you are, your wealth ain't going to do you no good when you ain't got no sanity. What profited the man to gain the world and lose his mind? They don't say lose your mind, they say lose your soul. Well, when the mind go, you done lost your body. You, you done lost control of your... Ain't none of them people in the insane asylum got control over their own body no more. They are told when they get up, they are told when they lay down, and, if they do, and when they need to sleep, they'll make them go to sleep by giving them a drug or something. But they ain't got no control over that now. And don't make no difference how much wealth they got. They just in a more comfortable insane asylum, but they in the insane asylum. I've been giving you a chance, for instance, to help me to help my people. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm not begging. And I'm going to tell you something else. I want y'all to stop calling me, telling me every other day you uh, asking your relatives to listen to me and all that. You ain't got to keep on begging nobody to listen to me. Invite them to listen and then if that once you done gave them a card and invited them, leave them alone. I'm not here to beg nobody to do nothing. They don't have to beg you when it's time to go get high. They ain't got to beg you when it's time to go get drunk at the party. And I ain't going to beg you to come hear the word of God. No, Allah didn't put me here to beg nobody. So, but you see, it's all written, isn't it? They talking about they don't believe in the Bible. The Holy Quran, let's see here. Let's go back to something else it says. <laughs> Boy, these people is something. Don't look like I'm going to get to it. Uh, the Kennedy this evening. Uh, but uh, we'll get back to it. Let's see here. Let's go to chapter... to uh, show you things that will make you think. I remember my teacher said, I, I want you to think a little while I'm talking. Right? You know, I don't, I don't want you to be sitting up here being entertained. I want you to think. You know why women in war, when they war and conquerors win a war, the women was always raped and and they they took to meet people's women. If I'd have been around, they wouldn't. So I'd have taught you what to do for your women. Wise them up. Wise your woman up. And uh, even though you the first line of defense, you wouldn't be the last line.
Yeah. You wise her up, then she would know how to deal with them crooks. I'm, I'm just telling you now. <laughs> Don't let your woman be stupid, man. Teach her. That's, the, that's something else America does for their women. They teach their women, man. Huh? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us, he said, uh, we have not respected our women as we should. That's true. No, none of the men on earth have. That's why in the wars, when you fell, your woman was a prey to the, to the people who was fighting you. Now, what if you had wised up and, uh, you know, they had, they had known what to do next? Huh? <laughs> Where you failed, they could have succeeded. I, I'm just telling you now. Y'all uh, remember that. Of course, it ain't going. I mean, that ain't the kind of world coming in now. We ain't in. You know, I'd have, I'd have, I, I would have been a pretty good general, but uh, uh, since we ain't playing war games no more, <laughs> I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna get into that. But I don't want no dumb sisters. I want you to be smart. I want you to be very knowledgeable. A, a smart man needs a smart woman. You understand? You know. And, uh, and so that's, uh, you know, that don't take nothing from you. Uh, you know, I mean, our laws, I mean, she's not, she's not going to exercise the kind of wisdom that a man exercises, but you can teach her how not to become somebody's fool. You understand? I ain't, they ain't gonna all listen. You you know, children, but you have more than one child in your quiver there. But you can, but for the most part, they will listen. And you can wise them up. A wise woman makes a wise nation. You know. When you get a certain amount of wisdom, wisdom dignifies you, makes you feel too dignified to disgrace yourself. And when a man gets a certain amount of wisdom and makes him feel too dignified to continue in foolishness. So the right cure for the disease in our hearts is the Spirit of Allah, the Word of God. For the Word of God will dignify us all. And God shall be all and in all. That's right. So now let's uh, go here in the... Uh, The seventh chapter of the Holy Quran. In the seventh chapter, and let's go to the uh, at the beginning of the book. This is the uh, first and second verses. It says, "In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful." It's just like them people that tried to suggest that um, the soldier, what's his name? Bergdahl, that his father was standing up there saying the, the, the Muslim victory thing. That man didn't say nothing about no victory. He said, in the name of God, the beneficent, the most merciful. Bismillah al-Rahman al-Rahim. That's what he said. But on Fox News, 
they there talking about he was talking about some victory cry. A jihadist victory cry. The devil show is busy, ain't he? But anyway, anyway, but now, but now, in his busyness, he's losing his mind. He was told to stop that in this day and time. Now, it don't wash. It don't fly. It makes him look stupid. So, he says, I, Allah, am the best knower, the truthful. A book revealed to thee, so let there be no straightness in thy breast concerning it, that thou mayest warn thereby, and a reminder to the believers. Huh? Okay. Go to the 38th chapter. The 38th chapter of the Holy Quran and the <clears throat> let's start the in the uh, 84th verse. He said, the truth is and the truth I speak that I shall fill hell with thee and with all those among them who follow thee. Then it tells, it says, say, I ask you no reward for it, nor am I of the imposters. It is not but a reminder to who? To who? The nations. The, nations. the Holy Quran is called a reminder. When you remind somebody of something, what do you do? What are you actually doing? What does the word remind mean? Make them do what? Remember. You don't have to be with me no long time to know what something means when you don't lose your lose yourself in thinking that it's a whole big drawn out meaning to something when you, the thing is right there in front of you. When you remind somebody of something, you make them remember something. Okay. Turn to the book of Malachi. The third chapter. And the 16th verse, it says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened. He, he listened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him. The Holy Quran is called a reminder. And it reminds you of what the Bible said. So you sound like an idiot coming in here talking about you don't believe in the Bible, but you believe in the Holy Quran. You are a liar. And I'll call you just what you are. See, that, that's just another way of telling you you are a hypocrite. The hypocrites are surely what? Liars. I'll show you an example. The Bible says in Genesis, the 17th chapter, It says, and when Abram was 99 years old, <laughs> uh, Abraham was up there, wasn't he? 
He wasn't even called Abraham yet. And he was 99 years old. It says, when Abram was 99 years old, 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and, uh, and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou complete, be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Now just think over that. Abram didn't have no offspring yet. You get 99 years old now, and if you ain't had none, people say, well, you too, man. You ain't have no children. Huh? Isn't that something? And uh, Abram fell on his face. And uh, <clears throat> just a moment. <clears throat> he fell on his face. Meaning he humbled himself. And God talked with him. You can't talk with God if you don't humble yourself. The messenger said, uh, God don't like proud people. Uh, you ever known a teacher that if you didn't humble yourself was ready to teach you anything? When you start getting up talking about and acting like you know as much as the teacher know, the teacher dismiss you. <laughs> Is that right? You got to humble yourself. Then it says, he talked with uh, Abram and said, as for me, he said, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram but thy name shall be Abraham. Huh? For a father of many nations have I made thee. Now if you, like me, I remember reading this. The Holy Quran is a reminder. Over in the 33rd chapter of the Holy Quran and the uh, around the 40th verse it says Muhammad is not the father of any of your men. You know what I thought when I read that? I said, boy, it's like they sit up here and, and compared what they were saying in these books to make sure they didn't, they didn't contradict each other. I knew why it said Muhammad is not the father of any of your men, because that was Abraham's title. And then you hear these nuts walking around here talking about Muhammad established Islam. They don't know what they're talking about. Abraham called us Muslim. Muhammad is not the father of any of your men. He didn't author Islam. Allah gave that title to Abraham. That's why Jesus said when he's when the rich man lifted up his eyes, he lifted up his eyes in hell. But when the beggar died, the angels carried him into the bosom of who? Abraham. The slave, I was taken, once I died, 
in the church when I was taught all of that misunderstanding and I was in it for a while and then I walked out of it well then I died to that that's why the messenger was able to take me into the bosom of Abraham now my sister my older sister she didn't give it up she didn't die she's still in the Christian doctrine and not knowing that what she's practicing of righteousness is not Christianity it's Islam but she's she's still holding on to that Jesus being crucified on the cross and dying and getting back up and talking about that's the that's the salvation when if they had just thought they would have known that somebody had been lying to them because if Jesus being killed on the cross was the price for your and my salvation then if that was the ransom that had to be paid then when he took his life back the ransom was taken back Now what? 33B Y is right. <laughs> I mean, think over that. I mean, they, they, they shot their own self in the foot. They say that Jesus gave his life as a ransom. Then they say he took it back. Well, if he took the ransom back, what was that his way of telling you? So now you know that him dying on the cross ain't going to save you, right? I mean, he, he can wash his hands of you now. Because if you was thinking, you said, well, if he took it back, well, then I guess I'm on my own now. <laughs> Do you understand? Now, that, that teaching never made no sense. And it's time for you now to know the truth. So the book teach you Muhammad is not the father of any of your men. But he is the messenger of Allah and the seal, just like any seal, you notice you look at a man of HR on the top of it, just in case the label one fell off the side, the, the top ain't no label, it's a it's painted on there, ain't it? it what you can expect when you open up that jar it's a reminder and it's a seal and it reminds you of what's in the jar is that right okay so the Holy Quran reminds you that Abraham is the father of the faithful huh don't say Muhammad is the father. No, Muhammad is not the father. He's the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. Huh? He also, he, 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 in the Holy Quran, it says, and when Lot came to his people and said, do you come to males with lust instead of females? In the Holy Bible, Lot said to them, he said, brethren, I pray you, do not so wickedly. Huh? He said, yeah, take my daughters, man, but under these men do nothing. Right? So the, the Holy Quran reminds you about Lot and what he meant by what he said, here's my daughters. Right? Because they come to males with lust instead of females. Do you understand? And it mentions Noah. Huh? And the Bible talks about Noah. And so when you when you hear these people coming up talking about they are Muslims and they tell you that they don't believe in the Holy Bible, then what they are actually telling you is that they are lying to you about being Muslims. 
They want to oppose us, the followers that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught. They wanted to oppose us. So they built mosques to oppose us. The Holy Quran told us about it. Oh yeah, you didn't know I you didn't know I had read about you, did you? <laughs> In chapter nine of the Holy Quran, <clears throat> and uh, the one hundred and seventh verse. It says, and those who built a mosque to cause harm to Islam. You notice the whole 40 some years that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was here teaching Islam and raising up the said nation of Islam. Not once did Americans accuse Muslims of being terrorists? Because the only Muslims they had seen was the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. They would get in certain little circles and say, well, they teach hatred. Right? But they wouldn't confront us with it. They didn't never get the Honorable Elijah Muhammad out there on the TV and, and accuse him, did they? Just like you don't see him getting me on no TV and accusing me. Right? Okay. Since they could not deal with us and make us look bad, black people were starting to flock to the messenger. So they went and got their friends from over there and, and uh, said these is the true Muslims. You know, these are true Muslims there. These people that's running around here blowing up stuff. <laughs> right? And they said, we didn't have true Islam. Right? Then why are them people that got true Islam running over here to America away from true Islam? I didn't hear you. Why did Kuwait, the, 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 is it a king or what is, what is in the Kuwait? What was the ruler called? Well, the government of Kuwait, they didn't call Arabia or Iran or some of those who say they are Muslim, Pakistan. They didn't call them to stop Saddam from aggressing on Kuwait and annexing it. They called America. That's mighty strange. Muslims calling Christians to protect them from Muslims? That's mighty strange, isn't it? But I told you, when you look at who's truly practicing Islam, you have no you have no choice but to say, uh, "Well, all the Muslims are." <laughs> that's, that's the truth. I mean, that's just the plain truth, man. I mean, I'll show you an example. The man that was going to burn some Holy Quran, me and him had a conversation, and his heart changed. Now, I don't know if he still went on with his burning, but he told me, he said, I don't have no problem with you. Ain't nobody got no problem with a righteous man. I mean, you might try to say you got that I'm got you got a problem with me, but what is it? What is your problem with me? What have I done to you? What 
am I trying to stop you from doing? What is what is it that I'm doing that's somehow hurting you? I'm not trying to stop white people from educating their children. I'm not trying to stop stop uh, uh, stop uh, uh, white people from living the, their way of life. I'm not trying to stop Chinese people. I'm not trying to stop Japanese people. All I'm trying to do is unite my people and get us up when y'all wouldn't help us. You are in a position to help us. You know that it's more to freeing a people than writing something down on paper talking about Emancipation Proclamation. You know it's more to freeing a people than that. You know that you never taught us that, look, you're going to have to learn how to develop your own, own uh, land. You're going to have to learn how to farm for yourself. You're going to have to learn to do the things for yourself that we're doing for ourselves, and we will help you. We want to help you get, go for yourself. You never did that. And you knew we were too dumb because you never taught us. Now are you surprised that God have visited me and decided to do it himself and offering you a chance now. Now if you say you want to see us really free, why you ain't offering me some help? All the governments that claim they believe in freedom. America sends billions of dollars to Egypt, billions of dollars to uh, uh, in, in aid to Israel and Egypt and uh, Pakistan and all these other places. And the people that you mistreated for 400 and some years, you offer us nothing. That's wrong, man. That's just wrong. You try to pretend. Let me let me uh, show you something here. You know, people pretend a lot in this country. People are big pretenders. If you get an old Muhammad speak newspaper, you will see that uh, this is not something new that I'm telling you. In what the Muslims believe, the last of the beliefs, number 12, it says, we believe that Allah God appeared in the person of Master W. Farad Muhammad July 1930, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. We further and lastly believe that Allah is God, and besides him there is no God, and he will bring about a universal government of peace. wherein we all can live in peace together. Do that sound like we want to murder somebody? Where is the hatred in that? There ain't something I, that I made up, changed, that's been there. God is not the flesh. God it came in the flesh. The mind is the God. Minds rule. Flesh don't rule nothing. It's 
So, so I'm uh, here. I'm here, which uh, represents the birth of a new nation. Nations are born head first. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad asked and answered the question about the birth record of the said nation of Islam. He said, what is the birth record of the said nation of Islam? He said, the said nation of Islam has no birth record because it has no beginning nor ending. I am the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord. I'm bringing in this nation of Islam. And the nation of Islam is going to be the whole planet Earth. Because once people realize that they don't have to f fear to listen to what I'm teaching and that it's not me trying to take over their house. It's just me trying to share with them the ability to rule their own house with justice. Treat your people with justice. None of you is a Muslim until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. You like to have nice home, nice clothes. You like to have your children in good education. You like to have good, good health care and all of that kind of thing. Well, then why don't you like that for your brothers and sisters? Because the reason you don't like it is because you have a wicked, corrupt mind. Come on in here and wash yourself. Wash the corruption away in what I'm teaching. This is my blood. The scripture says the Son of Man came to give his life a ransom. Well, what is the life? It's not talking about my physical life. It's talking about the word of God that's in me. In him was life. And the life was the light of those men that you call prophets. So I come to give you the life that's in me. The understanding that is in me. I'm here to give it to you. So that that corrupt mind that you now have can become incorrupt and incorruptible. Then you can see clearly how to help yourself and help your people. And believe me, you can help yourself and be very wealthy on this planet without hurting anybody. And pretty soon you're going to discover that the, 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 beauty, the beautiful part is is that what seemed so far out and far out of your reach, once you start really fixing it where every human being on the earth can be put in a fertile environment that will help the best that's in them come out, this universe is going to open up for us in ways that we never dreamed of. And we truly will go to the stars. Traveling at light speed and all of that kind of thing will no longer be an impossibility. We will be doing things that was before considered science fiction. Because all of our brain power will be, be, will be being used. The brain power of the whole human family. And then we will 
And ask a scientist. Don't take my word for it. Maybe you think I'm just standing up here just trying to say something to, to, to uh, uh, make you feel good. Ask any scientist. If you, can, if you could slow this planet in its turning, if you could slow it, if you could cause it to slow down, you could actually stop it from turning. Because whatever you took to slow it, you find a, some more pressure to put on it. Don't you, slow your, don't you slow your car down before you put the brake on? Huh? The same thing that you use to slow it is what you use to make it stop, huh? Now, if that's true, and it is, then people used to live, what, 35, 50 years, and thought they had made it. They thought three score and ten was a long time, didn't they? Do you not see that we are gradually slowing death down? In an infinite universe, let's, let's just think, let's just think. In an infinite universe, with all these other balls sitting out here in space, many of us have said, what a waste. With all these other planets out here, why is this the only one that's got life on it? i tell you why. Because this is the first one with life on it. When we grow up, we can put some life on the rest of them. What is a, I mean, you think that a thousand years is a long time. But when you think about it, matter cannot be destroyed. It only changes form. You have seen that you can, you can pass a table, wood. You have learned how to preserve wood where you can pass it from generation to generation to generation to generation and it don't go back to dust unless you let it go back. You've learned how to preserve, preserve stuff like that, right? You could do the same with the human body. You can't do it in the state of mind and the frame of mind you're in right now. Death is not a power. Death don't have no power. You know what death really is? Death is a, a, an effect of the absence of the ability to remain alive in the form that you are in. But even after you physically die in this form, that m matter that you are made of goes on to something else that is alive and becomes a part of that. Life goes on. But we break the law that allows us to remain in this form God call it sin. And when you break the law of life, then you destroy the life form that that law governs. Do you understand? All right. So, what we got to do we have to we have to stop breaking the law of life that's why the teachings of righteousness is so important what is it written i am come that they might have life and that they might have it in more abundance
We don't have to have. I mean, it's an insult to a, to a country this great to have anybody living in poverty. It's an insult. You shouldn't have to build freeways that bypass and bypass the, 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 the ghettos. You bring people, to, you notice the airport's always off, sitting off somewhere by a freeway. And that's why people used to come to America and think everybody was living just fine. But that's the way when I was growing up, the, the, the prettiest room in the house was the living room. When people come in the, come in the house and say, have a seat. And we go back in there and the rest of the house looked like I don't know what. Let's make the whole house beautiful. All right? We can do that. Look, whose fault is it, brother, really? If we live in a ghetto and everything is falling, falling down around us, if graffiti is all over the walls and if all the lawns are looking terrible, the houses are nasty and filthy. We can't put all the fault on the white folks because we could clean it up, couldn't we? Now, understand something. When you done got used to a certain way of doing things, once it becomes a habit, man or Old habits are hard to break. You don't break an old habit unless you consciously remind yourself, I said I wasn't going to do that no more. Huh? And you know what will happen? Now, we ain't going to clean up overnight. But if we just start consciously saying, look, I'm through just throwing trash out the window of my car. I'm through letting my grass grow all up. I'm through letting my house look all nasty. And just start with one room at a time. Don't think about the whole house. Just start with one room at a time. Say, I'm going to keep this one clean. I'm going to keep the kitchen clean. And once you get used to walking in that clean kitchen, you're going to be comparing that clean room to them nasty ones, and you're going to pretty soon die. I'm going to clean this other one too. Until pretty soon, we clean the whole thing. And what we are actually doing as we clean those rooms, we are actually cleaning up our minds too. Because you, are, you can't do what you're not thinking. What, what happens on the outside of us is actually a reflection of what's going on on the inside. Poverty is not on the outside of you. It's on the inside of you. You take it with you wherever you go. The key to success it's very simple. Whatever it is that you, you got to know first what you want to do. What is it that you want to do? And I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about good. Because if you're trying to do bad now, you're in the wrong t day and time for that. Ain't, that ain't going to be no success no more. That's going to get you put in the ground. But anything of good you're trying to be, Allah will always put someone there who can teach it to you. Someone who is successful at it. And that's the key to success. Hang around successful people. And keep your mouth closed, your eyes and your ears open. And you will become successful at that. Because once you learn it, then you can do it like they do it. 
and you be successful. Do you understand? And then you learn to cooperate with people, cooperate with each other. Corporations run the, the planet. But they've been cooperating with each other, many of them cooperating with each other in evil. It's time for evil to cease and goodness to start. And the ones who get in on the ground floor of goodness will become the most successful people. But the wonderful thing about the world that's coming in, whether you get in on the ground floor or not, once you finally get in, you're going to become equal with everybody else. You see? So, all these men, I've seen, I've seen men that can build, like the people that we bought that steel building from, after we poured our foundation and everything, the man sent us the blueprints, and we put the, everything there. And instead of us framing it up and standing up to steel and everything ourselves, we just hired a crew to come in here. You remember the crew of brothers that we brought in here? I mean, we're a crew of Caucasians. And uh, man, in a week, that building was up. Huh? Matter of fact, in what, four days, five days? They came here from Georgia, man. Put that building up and went on about their business, man. Now, with people who have that kind of skill, what if all of us in this country decided that we was going to start helping each other? Man, we could turn America into a model for every, you know, I mean, you don't have to go around the earth trying to bomb and shoot tyrants. All you got to do is build up something that the people can see an example. And when they see you living well, you don't have to worry about tyrants and dictators and stuff. They will oust them themselves. The people will just stop listening to them. The people, even the people who in the army and stuff, they say, well, I'm not to be in there with you. We can just go on and do what we see them doing in America. We're going to go on and do, do like this, and all of us can live well. And, and look, man, you better change, or we're going to kick you out of our country. Do you understand? You're not at nobody's mercy. When the human beings on this earth get tired of anything, they can put a stop to it. All these people, let me tell you something. When people talk about a billionaire. A billionaire, being a billionaire ain't no big thing. If all the people on the earth was united, six billion people, a dollar apiece, you could make six, you could make a, 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 a six billionaires a day and not even miss the money. That ain't no big thing. But once you realize the power and the value of unity, you would just start using your skills collectively to produce all of your needs, and everybody will live well. And then we can concentrate on what part of the universe we want to concentrate on working on first. <laughs> Man, let's get out the little tank and let's get in the ocean. You know, we've been fishing a bowl, man. Let's get out the bowl and get in the ocean. All right? That's what we're going to do. So, you know, all of these uh, people who just want people looking up to them and could care less, they, they spend all their time trying to get you to look up to them. And then when you start looking up to them, they look down on you. Treat you like dirt, man.
Stop looking up to people who could care less about you. You know I mean that. Everybody that want my number got it. You know, I don't look down on people. So let's uh, let's start helping each other. All right, let's show the world by helping ourselves. I'm talking to my people now. That don't mean that I would not accept help from Caucasian people or any other people that want to help and put something in that account. But I'm not going to wait on it. You got to do for yourself. A man that ain't doing nothing don't need no help. They all got an old saying. The squeaky wheel is the one get the oil. Is that right? Okay, well, the one who's doing something is the one that if somebody decides they want to help, that's the one to help, the one who's trying to do something. Not the one who's sitting down begging, waiting on somebody to give him something. I'm not begging you, but I am asking you to help me to help my people. Now, that account number? is at the Michigan First Credit Union and the the number is 1514-1314 and it will uh, uh, you can put it in the savings or the checking it don't make no difference it'll still be used you know we can transfer it to the checking when we write a check and you can either you can even check on what kind of payments is being made to who. I, I, I have no problem with you asking the, the credit people there, the people that run the union, what's being done with the money. Do it look like it's being used for what we say that we trying to do? They can tell you. I don't have no problem with that. So, you know, let's... Uh, Let's go on and and do better. Now, anybody got any question about anything I said? Anybody got a disagreement? Dis disagree with me and quit talking about me behind my back. You know, in this, even in the courts of this world, I'm going to tell you something. You know, the, the Holy Quran says, if an unrighteous person brings you news, look carefully into it, lest you harm a people, and then be sorry for what you did. And since the Bible said there ain't none righteous, no, not one, well, okay. And anybody other than a messenger of God bring you some news, you look very carefully into it. And even when the messenger of God bring you news, you know what God said do? He said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but test them, try them, to whether they be of God. For you know if one man is from God, he don't contradict another one that came from God. If I contradict any of the messengers of God, then you know God didn't send me. <laughs> Do you understand? I can't come to you and tell you, well, you know Moses didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, uh, Muhammad didn't know what he was talking about. No, I got to. I, I can't come and uh, contradict them. You know why I can't contradict them? Because the one thing that's impossible for God to do is lie. And they were his messengers, which means that they, when they spoke, they were speaking as they were inspired and told to speak by him. So how could they be liars? Huh? And consequently, they don't say something that contradicts each other. For God don't contradict himself. 
if it sounds like he's contradicting himself, then the best thing you can do is ask him what did he mean by that. Because the last thing you want to do is accuse the creator of lying. You understand? Okay. So that's what I want. I want you to uh, uh, learn to talk with me. You don't have to feel like you can't talk to me. As long as you're not talking foolishness, I, I love to, matter of fact, I love to debate. I love to have constructive argument. I love to knock down that which blocks you from being able to agree with me. When people think they know, then if they really think they know, they will discuss what they think they know with you. But if they don't know, and trying to pretend that they do, when you invite them to discuss it, they figure out a way not to come discuss it with you. You understand? So I'm showing you how to read people. Let her have the book. Give it to her. Now take it to your mother. Now let her get up there and sit down. So you don't you don't let people trick you, pretending with you. I'm showing you how to stop pretending, how to stop people from running game on you. So when they sit there and tell you, I he this and he that, ask them, well, why didn't you go in there and tell him that? But instead of coming in here to tell me what it is that I'm wrong about and reason with me about it, they want to come in here and cuss at me. So we used to have 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 old saying, "Don't cuss, call guts." <laughs> so, we, you know, I mean, you know, that's so it's 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 so um, elementary. I mean, that's the way you know we we used to do when we were children. Cuss him out. I cussed that so and so out. Yeah. And accomplished what? Really? What did you accomplish? Did you change his mind? That is one of the things that made people, made some of the wise people of this world coin the phrase, it is better to remain silent and be thought of as a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt that that's what you are. Because once you let foolishness fly out of your mouth, then you're known as a fool. So, are there any more questions? Then if there are no more questions, then I'm going to let you go because I don't want to start with uh, uh, President Kennedy right now because it's almost 12 o'clock up in Michigan. And uh, I, um, it's going to take more than just a few minutes to go through that. But I do want to go through it because when they, when they murdered President Kennedy, they caused the death of 58,000 young men and women. Fifty-eight thousand over in Vietnam, which never would have happened if President Kennedy had been allowed to fulfill his presidency because he had already determined that he was not going to send any troops 
to Vietnam. He told them no. So, you know, you never, you didn't realize by allowing that to happen, you were sentencing so many of your own children to death. So I, I need, I need, we need to discuss it. We need to understand it. And stop thinking that one person don't make a difference. I'm so proud that President Obama wasn't moved by people threatening to impeach him and all of that kind of foolishness. And he did his job. What kind of commander in chief gonna go ask Congress? Can he bring us bring a man home that he him and the Congress sent off the wall? Don't look like he leading from behind me. If the buck gonna stop with him, then why are they uh, trying to get the buck? Uh, tell him what to do if he the one got to take responsibility for what's done. Huh? I thought the chief executive of a company, of any company, had the last word. Trying to turn the presidency of the United States into a figurehead job. Congress don't want to just make the laws. They want to be the enforcers of them. Well, that's what they're trying to do. Isn't that right? What about the law that says you don't send our young people off to war and don't bring them home? And you know the sad part? They made, they made a big stink about getting him home. This administration should do more to get Bergdahl home. Then when he bring him home, you didn't ask us. You didn't inform us. Why? So you could leak it to the press and make sure they kill him before he get here? And then blame the president? Then they'd have been saying, well, he, he had information that we didn't have. If he thought it was dangerous, he should have just kind of brought him on home. You want, to, you want me to show you how full of hypocrisy they are? Listen to this, and you tell me who this is. Just tell me who it is, and then, you, then I'm through with it. Just a moment. You know, I don't have no respect for a person. You know, if you know how I was about President Obama when he was running for office, right? When I discovered that he wasn't the, the Uncle Tom or the, the lackey that I thought uh, he was going to be. I got up right up here and I told you I apologized, didn't I? I said, because I had to brother wrong. I had seen so many that got up there and, and sold us out that I was just sick of, sick of looking at them. But he made a believer out of me as far as, you know, that there's some of our people that can get in positions of authority and will not disgrace us and he's one of them. and his wife too 
both of them have, have been exemplary in their conduct in that high office. And so, and everybody knows it. Now tell me who this is. Senator John McCain proved it today in front of his own supporters, and they booed him for it. Our number four story tonight, where does John McCain go now? And as I think I may have mentioned, he's now so mavericky, he's mavericking away from his own supporters and getting booed for his troubles. As we just reported, after ripping up supporters with Obama's, quote, terrorist associations, McCain is now face-to-face -face with results and is having to talk his own supporters down from the conclusions to which he has led them. I got to ask you a question. I do not uh, believe in. I can't trust Obama. I, got I, I have read about him, and he's not. He's not. He's a. Um, he's an Arab. He's not. No, man. No, man. No, no, man. no, man. no man. He's a. He's a. He's a decent family man, citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with on on fundamental issues, and that's what this campaign is all about. He's not. Thank you. That was when he was honorable. That's when John McCain was trying to be himself and being an honorable man. Now, whatever the president say or want to do, John McCain out there doing what? Kissing the behind of it, kissing the ring of uh, all them boys who putting money in his bank account, huh? I don't have no respect for people like that. I ain't for sale. You know, don't never give me something and and, and come up to me talking about what I owe you after I, I give it back. I don't I don't need none from you. You ain't got you can't put no strings on me. I already own everything anyway. You ain't giving me nothing. I know you don't believe it. You ain't never got to believe it. Well, wait and see. So, you know, just wait and see. You still ain't figured out why folks start killing themselves after I said that's what they was going to do, huh? Yeah, just wait and see. <laughs> So we going to, uh, but that's the kind of people you got out there, you see. You don't get to be the president of the United States and be totally an idiot. And you sure don't get to be the president of the United States with no forged birth certificates and all that foolishness. Do you understand? I mean, really. to show you that they done dumbed the American people down so much that a lady could stand up and say something like that, talking about he's an Arab. Huh? Well, they help make them people think like that. Frankenstein getting, Dr. Frankenstein getting ate up by his own monster. You ought to quit lying. But that's politics, they say. Well, you know, that's, that's the way politics work. Well, if that's the way it works, somebody need to fix it. Because it's broke. And you know what? That's how they justify lying to you after they get in there. Because they say you didn't mind the lies when I was telling you before. 
Now you a man that lied to get in there. Now you think all of a sudden he's gonna be truthful after he get there. You you big dummy. <laughs> I had to borrow that from Fred. Fred sounds <laughs> I mean you about a dummy. But that song say the same thing it took to get a hook, that's what it's gonna take to keep. Her. Uh, well, that's it. They got your vote on lies, and so they just keep lying to you. Now you got a president in there that's basically truthful. He come out, he come out and tell the American people what he planning on doing and why. They get up there and we we're not gonna push no um, we're not gonna draft no innovation in a, in a immigration bill because we don't believe, we don't trust him to obey the law. Well, you've been trying to impeach him, do the bill, and if he don't obey the law, you got an impeachable offense. But that's a lie. What the real truth is, is that they don't want to be able to say that his presidency was successful at anything. Uh -huh. And all they're doing is manifesting their racist mentality, their bigoted attitudes, and people that was grinning up in your face trying to make you think they cared some about you and me could have gave, gave less than a tinker's damn about us. And remember something, uh, Congress, it's a lot of black people in the military see you. Yeah. And, and trust me, the brothers in the, in the Marine Corps, the brothers in the Army, the brothers in the Navy, they are not afraid of you. No more than I was when I was in there. No, after I got out. And if it wasn't for some of them who was in there that was so decent, then I, I, you know, I couldn't stand up here with the attitude I have. So I met some decent white boys in there, man. And, uh, you know, even some of the, the, the captains and lieutenants and stuff that I met, you know, they were, they were all right. You know. And so, you know, but we make no mistake. We, don't, we do not appreciate the disrespect that you have shown to this president. And you did it because he's black. Not because he was incompetent, but because he was black. George W. Bush showed far more incompetence than President Obama ever dreamed of showing. But you respected him. And your, your excuse was, if you don't ex respect the man, respect the office. But that's just like other things took you so long to do. You know, you come around, I reckon. Just take time. But you better you better you better check yourself. So I don't know what you all think that we gonna be doing while you think you killing us. You don't wanna go there. Even one of the gods tried to kill us and couldn't do it. That's how the moon got out there. Well, you don't want to try to go there. Because the minute you back us in the corner, well, we don't see no way out, and, and our life is depending on it, you're going to see a part of us that you, nobody wanted to see. 
And all the guns and stuff that you got ain't going to help you. So don't push us into no corner. Let us help you. And we will. May Allah bless us all, keep us safe, and in our right minds. Allah's salam alaikum. Your conference recording has come. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. yeah.